Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Computex Taipei Summit Foreign Afternoon Session. The 5G Wi-Fi A02.11 AC chipset, which has come out this year, has been at work reshaping culture with better communications and video via mobiles. How do we benefit from 5G Wi-Fi gigabit speed in the post-PC era? To answer this, we have here today Mr. Michael Hurlston, Senior Vice President and General Manager, Wireless Combo Connectivity Line of Business of Broadcom. He speaks on 5G Wi-Fi is here. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Hurlston. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, maybe everybody's still asleep from lunch, so it looks like it's a fairly small crowd. We did a presentation this morning for the DigiTimes keynote, and we had standing room only, so it was pretty exciting. There's plenty. It looks like there's plenty of room to sit here. Maybe VJ has plenty of plenty of room. Is that right? You can sleep. Okay, good. Hopefully, you don't sleep. <sighs> Okay, so what, what I, as the uh, introduction said, what I'm going to talk to you today about is a new Wi-Fi technology called 5G Wi-Fi. And uh, what, what's going on, you, if people are paying attention as they're walking around Computex and cruising around, you can see all of these crazy 5G Wi-Fi logos. There's some on uh, a SUS booth, there's one on an Edimax booth. And there's even some on buses that are driving around Taipei City. And you can see me there, like, hanging out near the buses. And one thing that I learned, which was pretty interesting, is that the bus drivers in Taipei are crazy. These guys, I mean, maybe everybody in the new room knows this, but to me it was a news item. I'm used to the crazy cab drivers, but I found the bus drivers are even worse. They almost killed me about 20 times. So I'm lucky to be here today to, to talk to you. Uh, but anyway, we have these 5G Wi-Fi logos even on the, on the buses as they're driving around in, in Taipei. So to set the stage, what's important and what, what are we talking about with 5G Wi-Fi? Maybe some background is in order. Wi-Fi is the most dominant technology in the home network. Okay, we, there's many different ways to connect devices in the home. We have Ethernet, we have Home PNA, we have Mocha. But if we look out, the most dominant technology is wireless LAN. It is everywhere. It's very, very pervasive. And one interesting thing that we did is we went out and we took a survey. Okay, now, in, in the U.S. right now, we have this election. There's an election going on, and it's election year, and, and many people in the U.S. are very tired of surveys. Every day, they're getting, we're getting phone calls about who you're going to vote for and this and that. So we thought we'd do our own survey to, to, to further uh, bore people. But in this particular survey, it turned out it was pretty exciting because we went out and we talked to a 1,000 different people and we asked them to make a decision between Wi-Fi and something else. And so we found the, in, the results were pretty interesting. First result was 60% of these 1,000 people that responded can't go a day without Wi-Fi. So that's a pretty interesting fact. 39% of all respondents would rather give up coffee for one month in exchange for Wi-Fi. Now, I can tell you, given my Starbucks habit, that's definitely not me. But apparently, 39% are in favor of, of uh, Wi-Fi over coffee. Definitely, I'm not in, that, I'm not in that number. And then 50% would give up Facebook. I heard this Facebook thing is a big phenomenon. I, I personally have no idea what this Facebook is, but my kids do. And they 50% said that they would rather give up a month of Facebook over using Wi-Fi. So you can see that people's attitude toward the technology backs up what I said earlier about the pervasiveness and how dominant a home networking 
technology Wi-Fi is. Okay? What's the second phenomenon? What's a, a, a big driver right now? If we look at internet traffic and take a backwards look, in 2008, 2009, sorry, more than 50% of the traffic being carried on the internet was to do with data, email or web surfing, activities like that. And less than 30% of the traffic had to do with video. But if we fast forward just two years, in two years, in 2011, we had more than 50% of the internet traffic being video related and 30%, just over 30% being data driven. So the dynamic has switched. In less than two years, the numbers have, have gone in almost complete reverse. And if we look forward, that trend becomes even more pronounced. By 2015, as this chart says, 91% of the traffic that the internet carries will be video. So it's a huge shift away from data toward video, market shift. And you can see that the data consumption and other types of traffic on the internet remain relatively constant over the period, but all the growth in internet traffic is driven by video. So video and video consumption is a significant trend and one that's really driving the growth of the internet. Okay, another trend or another thing, observation, is the devices on which video is being watched. So if we look back a couple of years ago, and you have to notice here our staging of the home, there's some, some time that's passing uh, given, the, given the look and feel of the home itself, but a couple of years ago, we had most of internet video being consumed on desktops, and on laptops. Okay, if you think about, it should be very obvious, if I'm watching YouTube or consuming some news feed, a video news feed from CNN or a sports feed from ESPN, where am I doing that? I'm doing that on a desktop, on a laptop computer. A huge percentage of data traffic is being, was being consumed on uh, PC type devices. But if we fast forward, and you can see the home getting a little more modern, 55%, more than half of the data traffic is now being consumed on devices other than PCs. So we have a big shift toward mobile products, phones and smartphones, even TVs now, direct to TV, where we have video consumption, the, the YouTubes and Netflix, Netflix obviously, Netflix streaming service, things of that nature going directly from the, uh, the internet and the cloud from a router to these kinds of mobile devices and different devices than PCs. So a big, big shift. If we look to at the way that Wi-Fi is changing from an application and end product perspective, we see significant change too. In 2008, you really had Wi-Fi going into, it's just starting in smartphones, so a very interesting effect, just going into the smartphones. Laptop computers, that was happening. Game consoles to a certain extent, of course, routers and home gateways. But the market has changed in a few short years. Now you have not only those types of devices, but also TVs, tablets, set-top boxes, even cars. There's a display over in one of the other buildings, uh, or maybe it's just downstairs, that's talking about uh, Ford and Microsoft on a sync device. And that sync device going into a car, bringing entertainment into the vehicle, has Wi-Fi technology. Of course, the good news is it's Broadcom Wi-Fi, so I feel very good about that. My team did a good job getting that design in. But you can see that the, the landscape has changed significantly from 2008 to today. 3.2 billion devices will have Wi-Fi technology or have Wi-Fi technology this year. And if we look forward now, 
again, just a couple of years, we see the landscape changing again. The big markets are medical, smart energy, toys, home appliances, Wi-Fi going into washing machines, into dishwashers. I never thought I'd be working with General Electric and Whirlpool, but that's where I'm spending my time now because you have a shift of Wi-Fi now going into the white box market. And you can see in just two years, the number of nodes almost doubling from three, mil three billion to more than five billion consumer devices with Wi-Fi technology. So you have all of these things really coming together. Number of devices, this video trend, all of these things are really converging right now. And the effect is to really constrain today's 802.11n network. Today's home network is being stretched. This video trend, the, trend, the number of devices that are entering the home, mobile products, all these things we never thought possible when in 2007 we came out with 802.11n as an industry, we never thought we were going to see this effect. We never thought 802.11n was going to get stretched to the degree it is. But you can see here in this particular example, what this means to illustrate is the fact that this tablet computer up in one corner of the house is not getting any connectivity. It's just too far away from the access point. So range is a challenge. And then here's a mobile phone. I now walk in with a mobile phone into my current 802.11n network, and I have a challenge. It, it can get no connectivity. There's already enough devices hooked to this access point to create a capacity challenge. So we have some need to upgrade, to modernize, to refresh the wireless network to meet some of these challenges, the challenges that today's consumers are bringing to the home network. And what is the answer? Well, how do we meet that challenge? Well, one, one answer is explained in this video short here. If you were to download a file from your current Wi-Fi connection, you receive performance similar to this. But with 5G Wi-Fi, you'd receive three times faster transfers anytime, anywhere without draining your battery. Speed so fast you can hardly believe this is even possible. Speed so fast they'll knock you right out of your... Is your device ready? So there it is. 5G Wi-Fi is the answer to this challenge, to this need to upgrade and modernize the home network to meet the demands of the video and capacity demands that are being placed on it. So what, what does all this mean? Where do we come up with this name 5G Wi-Fi? What's it all about? Well, the first generation of Wi-Fi technology happened as an industry, it happened about 1997. That was something we called 802.11, and it was capable of delivering about two megabits per second. The second generation happened in 1999. Okay, that was capable of delivering about 11 megabits per second. And then Broadcom came on the scene about 2002. This is when we started shipping our first devices. And I see one of the guys in the back of the room back there who is the father of this whole initiative. Broadcom came on in 2002, started shipping, and we captured the market share lead and have never relinquished it. 10 years now, we've been on top. So starting with the third generation of Wi-Fi technology, we, made, we grabbed a number one position. It's a position we haven't relinquished. In 2007, the next generation of Wi-Fi, the fourth generation of Wi-Fi technology, what we see today, called 802.11n, came on the scene. And this is capable of delivering 450 megabits of practical actual throughput and about 300 megabits of actual throughput. That's what today's 802.11n network can do, the fourth generation of Wi-Fi. And then we talk about 5G, 5G Wi-Fi, the fifth generation of Wi-Fi product. And here it is, 802.11ac, 
is what its technical name is. 5G Wi-Fi is much more. It's a, it's a standard or a, a brand that's built on top of 802.11ac to bring key attributes to the consumer. And I'll talk about those here in the next slide. So what does 5G Wi-Fi bring? Any networking standard is always defined by speed. That's one of the things that's very critical to a, a new networking technology. And 5G Wi-Fi definitely meets the speed challenge. Three times more throughput than you see on the fastest 802.11n network, and it has the ability to scale up from there. Today's 5G Wi-Fi is three times faster. It can go much more than that as we start to build more and more advanced uh, 5G Wi-Fi products. Second, capacity. We've talked about these capacity constraints. 5G Wi-Fi, you can connect many, many more devices to an access point, and it handles the capacity challenge that we talked about in the earlier slide. Coverage. Can we think about coverage in two ways, two dimensions. First is how I blanket a, a given room and make sure that there are not cold spots or areas in a room where I can't get a connection. Wireless, by definition, is not uniform. It's not predictable. And you have incidents with Wi-Fi where you're not going to get a perfect connection in certain areas of the room. But 5G Wi-Fi brings a very consistent experience, and it brings consistent coverage within a room. Those dead spots are eliminated. And then range is, uh, coverage is also defined by range. How far, what's the absolute distance away from an access point that I can go? And 5G Wi-Fi answers that bell and delivers two to three times more range than does 802.11n technology. Battery life, okay, the fourth and final parameter. Battery life is, is very, very important because most of the devices that we've been talking about are ultra portable, tablets, smartphones, ultra books. Being able to maintain battery life is critical and 5G Wi-Fi does that to the tune of six times better battery consumption than 802.11n. So on all four of these vectors, coverage, capacity, throughput, and battery life, 5G Wi-Fi delivers. Okay? So now a practical example here is being able to deliver four simultaneous HD movies at once. And in the keynote speech that we did earlier today, we actually were able to show this real time. We were in the conference, the auditorium downstairs, and we showed four real time movies coming off of one media server at once, being streamed in a room that was full of people and, and very challenged from a wireless environment. But those four HD movies streamed flawlessly, one of which was all the way across the auditorium. So it really did uh, answer the bell. And the other one that I think we can show, uh, oh, and so, so what we have is really the ability in a video environment to solve some of the problems that we talked about earlier with 802.11n. In this slide, you can see the tablet and the phone are receiving full connectivity. So the coverage issue, the capacity issue is solved. Now let's go to a real-time example. I have a, I'm not able to do as many demos as I was earlier in the morning, but to show a, a somewhat of a pictorial example of how well the technology works, we have an example where we're comparing on the left a file transfer using an 802.11n network and on the right a file transfer using 5G Wi-Fi. So let's take a look at how those two file transfers go. Okay, so you can see on the left is the 802.11n and you can see I'm now moving a file and starting it. Okay, so I've started that file transfer. On the right, I've started a file transfer using 5G Wi-Fi. This was a 500 megabyte file, so a very large file, to really il illustrate the difference in time. And this is something that is, is a very practical example, something that we uh, did real time in one of our labs. And you can see 
the 5G Wi-Fi connection, despite having started after, finished much sooner than the 802.11n transfer. It, it really does deliver on that speed aspect of being three, and in many cases, more times faster uh, than 802.11n. So the technology is ideal for video for all the reasons we've been highlighting. Video is really driving the home network use cases. 5G Wi-Fi delivers on capacity, it delivers on range, it delivers on throughput. It really solves and helps improve the video experience. From a mobile perspective, right? Mobile is very concerned about battery life, also coverage, being able to trend. If I have a mobile device, I want to be able to move to many places in a room, in an office, in a home, many different places that device will go, much different to a more fixed device like a PC or a, or a laptop. I want to have the ability to move much more freely, and 5G Wi-Fi enables that by improving the battery life and by improving the coverage. So I think the, the key thing, there's been a lot of announcements here at the show by some of our competitors talking about this technology and the difference between what we're doing and what they're doing is our products are very real. The products that we have are available and we'll go into some of that. But starting with CES, we first announced, some other companies are now busy announcing here at the show, kind of joining the party, which we're very excited about. But we announced at CES this year. We announced four chips, four different devices, three of which are already in full production. Okay? We followed that. There was some discussion here in CNET about some other chips that we announced, follow-on products. Here was the first product announced, a family of products from Netgear. Okay? Then the first product actually to ship was from Buffalo. Okay? And then some, some reviews were done, and, and very atypical of normal reviews. These reviews were very complementary of the technology and how it delivered on the promise that we've been talking about. It met the bar from a speed perspective, from a coverage perspective. All of these kinds of things, when a reviewer actually did some experimentation on it, came back very, very favorably. More than that, we have news coming out of China, out of Taiwan, talking about the technology, talking about this trend, and, and basically moving now very quickly toward 802.11ac. Some more coverage, a translation of, from Engadget of a Buffalo review. And again, some more news. So it's not only happening in the US, in Western Europe, but it's a phenomenon driving here in, in Taiwan. We're seeing it very much in China, India. There's a big, big revolution underway and a transition from 802.11n to 5G Wi-Fi. So just highlighting for a minute, what kind of products are we talking about? First, routers. This, this is a, a family of products that Netgear launched, a three-stream, a two-stream, a USB dongle, all of which are available today. You can buy these products today. Next, some the Buffalo products I talked about earlier. But that, those products are being followed by a whole host of other routers, products from D-Link, from Belkin, from Tenda in China, Edimax that's showing some products downstairs. A huge shift and already a wave of product designs using this technology, using Broadcom chipsets and incorporating into real products that you can buy. The most interesting announcement happened in this show around ASUS. So we talked a lot about the router products and, and ASUS on Friday came out with an announcement, a router announcement, but more than that, ASUS announced a motherboard product. And of course, this motherboard can be used as a gaming device, it can be used as a media server, but this motherboard, a standalone motherboard, incorporates 5G Wi-Fi, the first client device to use the technology. And then perhaps most importantly, ASUS also announced a notebook computer that will be available in the next few weeks that uses 
5G Wi-Fi technology. So you can see here an entire ecosystem. ASUS is putting together an entire story, router, motherboard, notebook, all using this technology, pushing to the edge of, of Wi-Fi technology. Okay, and this is really just the beginning. Uh, we have uh, the big move on the infrastructure side, products that are available today, products that are going to be available very, very soon. We talked a little bit about the trend in terms of going into the, the, the notebook computers. We think ASUS will be the first, is obviously the first. There will be other companies to follow shortly after using the technology in both motherboard devices, desktop devices, and PCs. But this will find its way into TV sets and into set-top boxes this year. And then perhaps most importantly, because it's the biggest market today for wireless LAN, is the mobile devices. We expect devices going, this technology going into digital cameras, into mobile phones, and into tablets in the very early part of 2013. So you can see over the next six to nine months, an entire wave of new products coming out featuring this technology. And this really talks to how it all comes together. Life moves fast. Luckily, with the help of 5G Wi-Fi, the next generation of Wi-Fi products, I can keep up. Now I can instantly transfer data from all my Wi-Fi devices, sharing photos, music, documents, even movies, all without hesitation. You could say that 5G Wi-Fi moves at the speed of life, connecting everything faster. The fifth generation of Wi-Fi is coming. Get ready. So there we have it. Right? To, to summarize, there's going to be a lot of news, I think, coming out. This is the beginning of the revolution. Broadcom is leading, again, the next phase of wireless LAN technology, 5G Wi-Fi. We're out in front as innovators. There will be a lot of news, I think, coming out. We'd encourage everybody to start watching our website, www.5gwifi.org. And we'll keep everybody updated on the news and developments as this technology continues to evolve over the next six to nine months, which I think will be very, very exciting. So thank you very much. Uh, hopefully the talk was informative. And look for us on the website. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Houston, for sharing the ideas with us.